Hi there and welcome to the Arkansas e-traveler. Today I am at an Iona Rechargery in Blue Springs, Missouri. Glad to be back with you after about a week and a half, two weeks off due to appendicitis. I'm about 90% there, but glad that uh, well enough to make the trip up I-49 to Kansas City in Blue Springs, Missouri. Uh, it's a special day. We're doing a virtual meetup with Walter from the Network Architect channel and a bunch of other fellow YouTubers covering IANA uh, for out-of-spec bits. But while I was here, I figured I'd go ahead and do a site visit and uh, definitely looking forward to this one, my first IANA visit. Uh, ready to get plug and charge, uh, my first experience with it underway. So stick around. We're getting ready to start this charging session. Make sure we have everything right. We pulled in at 28%, a little higher uh, than I thought it would be. Uh, between Bentonville and uh, Blue Springs, Missouri, I got 3.1 uh, uh, miles per kilowatt hour, and that kind of surprised me. That was uh, really, really good. So, um, you know, hopefully we don't jinx it with that. But we're gonna go ahead and set everything up here. Now, this is the first time, as mentioned, I've used plug and charge. So let's go see how this process works out. First thing I wanna do is take a look at the screen. And remember, you have a couple of options here, okay? We're gonna be using plug and charge. Um, although here it says it also supports auto charge, so I guess both protocols work, but I have gone to the GM app and uh, made to where plug share or a plug and charge will work. Uh, introductory price, 39 cents per kilowatt hour. Uh, not too shabby. Um, I don't like that that's an introductory price. I think that's a good price, but uh, what, what do I know? All right, so let's go ahead and get this going. Set up and grab, let's do, I think I'm supposed to do 4B even though 4A would be easier. Big old beefy cable. Take a look at the bottom of it. Okay. And they are Amphenol. Just, we'll grab it. Let the arm swing around just for the hoots. All right, and now let's plug in. Ugh, yeah, still kind of struggling from the appendix surgery. That was harder than it needed to be. Ow. All right. Another reason to support J3400. All right. All right. So just say accept. Although if I had just let it go, it probably would have done it anyway. Go through this litany of pre-charging steps. Got a beep from the Blazer EV, and we have started. And now we will begin to ramp up, preconditioned on the way in. Actually, been sitting here for a while with the air conditioner running. Uh, it's off now, as we did the uh, out of spec bits meetup, but uh, ready to get charging session. We're ramping really well. Of course, this is everybody's favorite right here. Doesn't tell a full story right now, but it will later. Let's take a site visit.
by now we're all pretty much aware that one of the names of the game for Ayana is um, amenities. Now, this is not the most amenity-packed location, but it is incredible for what it is. Uh, being a rechargery at location, in this case it's located at a Philips 66 and Burger King. Let's talk about some of the amenities that they do have. Offering the Alpitronic HYC 400 units in all of their glory with full 600 amp cables from Amphenol and of course uh, wouldn't be Ayana without a pet friendly station. Have that go in there. They even provide uh, some other ways to dispose of that if you need it. Um, and I've already seen a representative from the uh, Philips 66 come out here and tidy things up, check the trash. So they're paying attention at these locations. So let's show you this as well. Squeegees, paper towels, uh, trash cans already emptied the, the trash from the road trip. So uh, that's really, really good to see. Um, let's take a look around over here as well. Uh, this is my first time at an Ayana, obviously. Uh, I've used this screen before at a Bucky's on the Mercedes-Benz High Power Charging Network, but uh, we can go ahead and check in on it as we have just started. Started at 28%, already up to 43. Uh, we've been going for six minutes. If we check out charging detail, that's what we're looking at right now. Hit a peak of 157 so far, and now we're kind of climbing off that, waiting for it to hit 120, and then do the infamous GM dip, which I think we will see today. It is uh, 1045 in the morning here right now, and it is already 90 degrees, so summer in full effect in the Midwest, and uh, we'll probably see the dip as a result. So uh, let's keep on looking around. So let's check in on the charge and exactly what we thought might happen appears to have happened. So if we go to charging detail, you can already see we are dipping very, very abruptly. Uh, we're about 18 minutes into this according to the screen. And so we have fallen off the cliff as the thermals of the uh, Blazer EV approached 120, pulled back the amperage, and now it tries to cool off, and we should see this start to rebound uh, fairly soon. Um, so, pretty nice, uh, typical summer charge session so far. One of the things that I think cannot be understated here, and it's going to depend on the time of day you get here, but the canopy is allowing me to get some shade and not run the air conditioner as hard while it's charging. Um, I know a lot of friends with the Blazer EV now are getting messages that say something like um, uh, turn off AC to improve charge time. I have not received that update yet, but again, I have not driven this thing in about two weeks following my appendectomy. So uh, kind of waiting on that to cycle around to me. I would suspect based on the order in which my friends usually get their updates, I would get that this week. Um, so if that's going to be a thing to where to get the fastest charge times, we have to inconvenience ourselves, thanks GM, by turning off the air conditioner, that's going to be a huge help in that endeavor. Okay, so maybe I was wrong. I do have the update that enabled this. Um, and so I did go ahead and turn everything off being under the canopy. Um, one thing I noticed though, is that that came on and I turned it off at about 29 kilowatts. And so it instantly went up to about 40. Maybe it'll keep climbing here. Um, I don't know if that's a trade-off I wanna make. I don't know. 
Um, but hey, it's 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 there. I'm glad to see this functionality in my Blazer EV. So um, yeah, there's there's a decision to be made there. Um, let's go ahead and see if we can't wrap this session up. All right, and the session has just completed, reaching 80% here in Blue Springs, Missouri. Let's take a look at it, the stats here. Put in 50 kilowatt hours of energy. This right here is probably the most underrated stat in all of EV charging. The average kilowatt rate being dispensed was 86. You can talk about having 350 or whatever, but it's not anything if you can sustain it. This thing tries to boast 150 kilowatts, cannot sustain it. So a lot to work on with th uh, thermals for GM and the Blazer EV and, and the other Ultium platform uh, vehicles. All right, so let's dissect this here. So came in at 28%, again, a little bit more than I would have liked. Otherwise we probably would have seen this sustain for a little bit longer. Once we hit that high point, then we start coming down, and then right here, the battery hits 120 degrees, and the GM dip happens, backs off on the amperage. Down here, it got down to about 30 kilowatts, 30 kilowatts, and it told me, hey, turn off the air conditioning. Didn't think it would do that, but it did. So I did, and it rebounded. Can you guess what I did right there? I turned the air conditioning back on, and it goes back down, and then it has to recuperate again. So. A very informative charging session. Again, they like to advertise at GM that you can get from 20% to 80% in about 40 minutes. We went from 27 to 80 in less than 35. So we were about on target. But I just feel like if they... Cool, I remember my first car. Um, I just feel like if they would work on the thermals a little bit, I don't even think they have to beat them up, but like... Maybe 120 is a little restrictive on the batteries. Maybe maybe it's exactly what they need it to be. Maybe it's uh, there's a problem with that much heat in these chemistry batteries. I don't know. I'm not the engineer. But what I do know is is that um, it just seems like the thermal management on this thing, it, it just is so timid and nervous that we, we pay kind of a price on it. So um, we'll just wait until winter, and then that dip gets a little, little more palatable. Let's unplug and head out. All right, and there you have it. My first visit to an Iona station in Blue Springs, Missouri on uh, I-70. Great location very close to the highway. This is a meaningful spot, a meaningful place to stop with the Phillips 66 convenience store, clean restrooms available there, all the snacks you need, and then of course the Burger King that's also attached if you need a meal or a, another snack as well from, from that location. Amenities galore, even for such a simple setup. Uh, that's the name of the game for Ayana, and they're leading the way right now, it would seem, in making that happen. So this was absolutely a uh, great stop to come up to Blue Springs, Missouri to check out. Had a great time with the Out of Spec Bits meetup with Walter and everybody else across the country. That was, that was pretty special. So uh, I'll have that linked uh, if you want to see that. Uh, I'm not sure when that's going to come out in relation to this video, but uh, I'll, if it's available, I will go ahead and link it. Also, I know several of you have been asking about, hey, what's up with Walmart Energy? Well, I have a lot of information, just have not had the uh, capacity post-surgery to uh, uh, get that information out in a meaningful way. Uh, an update is coming uh, very soon for that, and so we uh, just always check in on those. I, I try to um, make sure that all of the information I have gets out as quickly as possible uh, once enough has been garnered. So uh, just always routinely check in. If Walmart Energy's build out is uh, of interest to you and you want to see what's going on with that uh, as close to weekly as I can do it, go ahead and subscribe. You can turn on the notifications if you want to do that as well. Uh, that'll make sure that you see the latest information on Walmart Energy or EV site reviews here in the Mid-South 
or in the Midwest as today is. Uh, so it's just a lot of fun having um, uh, the summer off, being a teacher and everything. So uh, this is really, really fun. One last thing to look forward to at the uh, beginning to mid-July, look forward to a one-year review of being with the Blazer. And uh, I'm going to be fairly uh, as, as honest as I can uh, to, to tell you the truth. And uh, there are some really good things and there's some things that are starting to disappoint me. I can't wait to get into that uh, to make sure that people who are interested in this make as informed a decision as they can. So let, we'll have that coming out first or second week of July. Well, I think that's everything. Uh, I'm Landon on behalf of the Missouri e Well, it seems to be the Missouri e-traveler, doesn't it? Uh, on behalf of uh, the Arkansas e-traveler here, we're so glad that you joined us and uh, happy trails.